You know why I really love uh, Nick Hood as a minister? I watched his father uh, do it, and he took over for the church. And uh, he was one of us, but he really turned out to be a great minister. I know it's hard, and that's something that I know that all ministers may not be doing what they're doing because uh, for the right reasons. But I know it's hard. I know he's a beautiful man, and we've been knowing each other for over 50 years. Uh, I believe in him. He's inspired me in so many ways to do what I'm doing and try to be the best at it. Make sure you watch Nick Hood's ministries. You'll never be the same. And the point that I'm making is that in everybody's life, at some point, there's a plan B. God is talking to us every step of the way. God is trying to show you something every step of the way. When things seem to be going wrong, that's God's way of, of opening another door. I am convinced that God has been directing me every step of my life. On the Word Network. This is a new ministry which is just starting. Reverend Hood needs your help in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and his power throughout the world. If you would be so kind as to send a donation to Nicholas Hood III Ministries of any amount, Reverend Hood will send you a free complimentary copy of his book of original personal prayers and beautiful photographs entitled The Test, The Strength, The Endurance, and The Way Out. Welcome to Nicholas Hood III Ministries, a ministry of hope, spiritual inspiration, personal power guided by Christian love. May the power of God's Holy Spirit fall upon you as you sit back and enjoy today's program. I introduce you now to Pastor Nicholas Hood III. For the next few weeks, I want to preach about different elements of love. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, love believes all things. Love believes all things. Let me give you the fuller context where he says love believes all things. Paul says in the first verse, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and have all faith uh, so as to move mountains, but if I have not love, I am nothing. He says, uh, if I give away my possessions, my body to be burned, to impress others, but if I have not love, I am nothing. Then he begins to tell us in detail the elements of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Love is not irritable, resentful, or rude. But rather, love bears all things. Love believes all things. That's our theme for today. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends. So today, I want to focus for a few minutes on what does it mean for love to believe all things? Does it mean that if I love you, then I'm going to believe everything that you say? Well, to some extent, yes. I think that's part of love. Part of love is that we give the one we love and the ones we love the benefit of the doubt. But even when giving somebody the benefit of the doubt, we still have to use reason. For example, if the one you love tells you that they went out to buy a loaf of bread, but it took them eight hours. Uh, I think it's well within your reason to ask them, why did it take you eight hours to buy a loaf of bread? Uh, if the one you love tells you that they spent all night working on a sermon, but then when they come home, they smell like perfume and have lipstick on their face, you may want to ask them, what kind of sermon preparation was that? Um, I used to be on the Detroit City Council, and one of the 
elder statesman on the city council with me was a guy named Mel Ravitz. And he used to say, when somebody would come with a proposal to the city of Detroit for development, he, and it would, it, it would seem like a no-brainer that you would want to support this person's proposal. Ravitz would say, he would caution everybody at one point you know, or other, he'd hold up his hand, he'd say, I just want to say, this sounds like a great idea, uh, and it's good to trust, but it's better not to. It's good to trust, but it's better not to. So I say that in the context of what does it mean when the Apostle Paul says, love believes all things. First thing is, the Apostle Paul is preaching to himself. And you may say, what do you mean, Reverend? He's preaching to himself. I think he's preaching to himself just even by the context of the words that he uses in 1 Corinthians 13. In 1 Corinthians, you know, he talks at great length about the spiritual life. And he talks at length uh, in the 12th chapter. He talks about the importance of speaking in tongues. He says, I wish everybody would speak in tongues. Uh, but then uh, you see him in the 13th chapter, and he says, but if I, now he's talking about himself, but if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, that, think about what he's saying. He's saying, if I can speak, if I am speaking in the tongues of men and of angels, but if I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What Paul is really trying to tell us, my friends, is that um, your spirituality is really undergirded by love. If you don't have a sense of love, you can go to church every week. You can lead the church in the giving of tithes and offerings. Uh, you can visit the sick, uh, which is a good thing. That's more toward the element of love. But if you don't have love, you don't have much. And so then in Breaking Love Down, he says, love believes all things. So on one level, to believe all things means that we do give the person we love the benefit of the doubt when we want to talk to them. Number two, though, to believe all things means we also believe in them. That's another element of love. It's not just believing what a person says, but rather also believing what a person can be. The good mother believes in her child. The good father believes in his child. The good uh, child believes in their parent, even though the parent may be weak. The parent may be a drug addict. The parent uh, may suffer from depression. Uh, but if you love that person, I bet you somebody looking at this right now struggles with depression. I bet you somebody right now is wondering about a child who can't get their life together. But the good parent loves and they believe in that child. Uh, I'm so glad my mother and my father believed in me. Because one of the things I've learned now that I'm a parent is that uh, children, you know, sometimes it takes a while for the child to find their element. Sometimes it takes a while for a child to find their place in the world. But the good mother, the good father, won't let you go. There are people who are looking at this program right now who are in prison. There's a fellow in state prison in Kentucky. We've got uh, Ernest Perry in Illinois. And both of you have family who are praying for you. Both of you have people. Uh, who have not given up on you. You know, when society puts you in jail, in a sense, that's society's way of saying, we don't want anything else to do with you. We don't know what we can do you. We're not just punishing you. We are taking you off the streets. But your mother, your father, your church, your neighborhood, your friends, people who grew up with you, are people who will not let you go. They will not give up on you. And I tell you, that's what Paul is talking about when he says, love believes all things. Love believes that even though you're sick, that one day you will be back to 
Love believes in you and knows that even though you've lost a job, gotten fired at work, that the people who love you believe that you can rise above being fired. Love believes all things. Love also believes not just when the bottom is falling out of your life, but love will believe in you when you do well. Sometimes the biggest problem a person can have uh, is coming into a lot of money. Sometimes uh, having money is a bigger challenge than being poor. Because when you have money uh, and money running over, uh, when you have uh, enough money where you can buy several houses, several cars, and uh, several changes of clothes, sometimes just having money and the ability to spend money uh, can be addictive. And, but the people who love you believe in you when you're poor. They'll believe in you when you're rich. They'll believe in you when you're sick, but they'll also believe in you when you're healthy. They'll believe in you uh, when you're in your right mind, but they will also believe in you when you're out of your right mind. They will believe in you uh, when you're making sense. They'll believe in you when you don't make sense. And when you don't make sense, it's not that they believe in you that your nonsense is sense, but rather they believe in you that one day your nonsense is going to flip and you're going to be on a better track. And I just thank God that Jesus Christ himself believes in you. Jesus Christ looks at you, not for as you are, but for what you can be. Jesus Christ looks at you not as a family mess up, but Jesus Christ looks at you as a person who is on his way up. And the Lord has the doors of the kingdom of heaven open for you right now. And because the Lord is looking at you as pure possibility and the Lord is looking at me, I'm so glad the Lord hadn't given up on me because the Lord believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. The Lord believed in me uh, when I wasn't always on the right track. The Lord believed in me and protected me uh, from myself. Some of us, you know, you know, mess up because we don't really want to give the Lord a chance. But the Lord uh, is looking at us as one of possibility. The one looks at you not as an unemployed person, not as a person who is, you know, rambling around trying to find your way. But the Lord looks at you as pure possibility. Uh, the Lord looks at you uh, not as somebody who's just suffering because of uh, illness, you know, a reaction to some pharmaceutical medication that you took. But the Lord is looking at you uh, as somebody who can be miles, miles higher than where you are right now. And so my friends, I encourage you this day to be encouraged. I want to encourage you with yourself to let you know that the Lord believes in you and I do too. I believe in you. And I believe that the time that you've spent today looking at this program uh, ought to be an encouragement. It ought to be uh, an encouragement to you to know that your living is not in vain. God sees something good in you, and so do I. God sees possibility in you, and yes, so do I. God sees a winner in you, so do I. God sees a victor in you, so do I. And so hold on to this prize, hold on to this faith, hold on to this good news, and share the good news. Just as God believes in you, I want you to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, believe in your possibility, and then believe in the people around you. Believe that they can be more than what they are and help them in that process. God bless, God keep you. Stick around to the next half of this show, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about believing in you. God bless. America used to be considered a godly country. It doesn't seem to be that way to me now. And I don't mean to be disrespectful or anything, but it's so many things they're okaying for the wrong reasons. There's not godly reason. 
People need to really open up the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, and look in it and, and, and really get it into their heart. And this, the way the, uh, the Reverend Hood is doing this, this is a comfortable way. It's not forcing anything on people. It's a comfortable way and a loving way for it to continue to move in that direction. The way Reverend Hood presents it, uh, you can understand it and it makes you want to delve into the Bible even more so that you can see more uh, because uh, it seems like his, the program goes off too fast. <laughs> we need the bread, the bread of life. We really do. Uh, these days we need it more than ever and Reverend Hood's ministry on TV is giving us our bread. Thank you for sticking with me today. Uh, I've been talking about love believes all things. And uh, if you want to score your love, if you want to figure out where is your love in the context of what the Apostle Paul says, uh, think about 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4. He says, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous, is not boastful. Neither is it irritable, resentful, or rude. But love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So today I want to focus on that one verse. Love believes all things. And I want to thank uh, the people, uh, some people that I'm going to call out their names right now, who believe in this ministry. Uh, I mentioned last week, but I'm going to mention her again. Ms. Quintia Harris of Charlotte, North Carolina. Ms. Harris believes in this ministry. She told me, she said, Reverend, you're different. I said, well, I hope that's good, G different as in a good way. She said, no, you're good. I want to thank Deborah McIntosh from Mobile, Alabama. She's the first person to financially support this ministry. And Ms. McIntosh, I'll never forget you. I want to thank Phyllis and Kevin Tony. Kevin has gone on to glory uh, last year, but he and his wife, through um, PayPal, actually were supporting this ministry every month. Uh, he and I went to high school together, and it's funny, when we were in high school, we weren't really friends. We were competitors. Uh, and that's a joke for me to say I was a competitor to Kevin Tony, but we were musicians, and uh, I played in a band, R&B band. He played in several R&B bands. My band made a lot of money, and he went on to make much more money than I could ever imagine playing in music. Uh, he's with Donald Bird and the Blackbirds. He's the guy that wrote the song, Doing It in the Park, Rock Creek After Dark. But Later in life, he and I reconnected and had just a tremendous opportunity, tr tremendous time uh, talking about our youth. Uh, but he was very touched by my ministry. And uh, I let him preach at my church. And so to his wife, Phyllis, uh, who watches this program sometimes, they're from Los Angeles. I say, God bless you and I want you to know I'm praying for you. Um, and there are many others. Barbara Allen from Longview, Texas, really likes this program. And Ms. Allen, I want to thank you. Um, we have Lorimer and Jackie Wyatt from Southfield, Michigan. Josephine Austin from Detroit believes in this ministry. Wendy Duman from Niles, Michigan believes in this ministry. Ethel Herrick from the Bronx in New York really likes his ministry, and I'm grateful. I mentioned about Ernest Perry from Vienna, Illinois. He's in state prison there. Uh, Michael and Lindsay Cantrillo, uh, they're from California, from the Kingdom Agenda Ministries. One of the great believers in this ministry who supports this ministry every month is Delgenia Barber, who's a member of my church in Detroit, 
And Ms. Barber has been, she told me early on, she said, I believe in what you're doing. And I said, Delgenia, I said, that's the greatest news I could ever hear. I said, because this is new for me, but it also is represents, this ministry represents something I wanted to do since I was 24. Uh, and you know, that's another story, but you know, I came into a television ministry uh, almost through the back door. The Christian Communication Council of Detroit asked me to just co-host a, a program on our local NBC affiliate. And, but you know, because of my ministry, because of the politics I was involved in at the time, I could never see myself doing it. That was at 24, now I'm 72. <laughs> and I just thank God, you know, I didn't wait too late. Uh, but it takes believing, believing in yourself. I believe in this and I wanna thank the people whose names I've been calling who also believe in this. Um, I wanna thank Renee Turner Bailey, who's a member of my church in Detroit. Dr. Adanika Nunu, who's a member of my church in Detroit. Attorney Rita White, a member of my church in Detroit. There's a fellow named Charles Johnson from the Bronx, New York, and I wanna thank him. Huel Perkins from Michigan, uh, who's the anchor on our Fox News station. Uh, he's now retired, but he's been a very encourager. He's given me great advice. Uh, some of it I don't know about. He told me, he said, Reverend, you might want to think about going on TikTok. And I said, Ben, I don't know if I can spell TikTok. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know if I could reduce a message to three seconds. But, you know, I think he's ahead of his time. And, um, and there are many others. Um, Joe and Margie Shorter from New Orleans. Margie and I were potty trained together. She, you know, and um, it's funny, the older I get, the people, part of my close group, are people I was potty trained with. That, that may sound ridiculous, but um, what I'm trying to get at is, it's important to believe in yourself, but it's also important to have people who believe in you. Um, Millicent Holly of Detroit, um, I thank her. David Snyder, one of the first people to call me, call in on this show from Texas, somewhere in Texas. And he asked me to pray for Syrian pastors uh, who were suffering uh, and some who had been abducted. Um, so my friends, what I'm trying to say is, uh, one, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this program. And if this program means something to you, uh, if you've been touched by this message today on love believes all things, I would like you to believe in this ministry. If you believe in this ministry, if you believe it's been worth 30 minutes of your time today on the Word Network, I want you to consider making a donation, a tax-free donation to Nicholas Hood III Ministries. And I'd like you to send it to 4535 Chrysler Drive. You can see the address uh, on the screen. And uh, if you want to know more about what I do in this ministry, there's several things. Number one, I have a website, the same name. Just all you have to do is remember my name, put that in Google and it'll come up. And uh, on that website, every week, I publish a, a fresh and updated uh, meditation. The meditation, uh, well, you know, we, we tape these programs ahead of time, but the meditation is really sequential. And so all summer, I've been taking one verse at a time from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 17, excuse me, 13, verse 7, uh, is the one that I'm on today. Love believes all things. Uh, after that, it'll be love hopes all things. And following that, it'll be love endures all things. And if you want to know more about this kind of ministry, 
I invite you to go to the website. I also publish a daily blog. And on the blog, I don't like that word, blog, but really it's uh, you know a Word document, so it's on a computer. And uh, some are short, but many of them are long. And I send out prayers. I blog, blog meditations. Uh, I even blog the videos uh, that I do on the Word Network. And I encourage you to take a look at it. Additionally to that, I also send out a spiritual email every week, every Monday. I send it out early in the morning. And it's amazing to me already, uh, as of today, I have about 230 some people who open that email. And that's one of the most gratifying things I've ever seen. Uh, because what I do in the email is I take a theme like the one for today, love believes all things, and I just write about it. And I offer a prayer. I also offer questions for reflection. And if you are looking for something more spiritually. Uh, if you, you, know, you like the videos that you see on the Word Network, that's fine. But if you want to send, you want to receive a prayer by text message, call in and give me your, your, your telephone. If you want to receive an email from me, uh, email meditation on a topic like love believes all things, love hopes all things, and love endures all things, just send it to me. Send me, you know, you can uh, send me your email address. Uh, there are other things that I'm doing too. Uh, I'm sponsoring a trip to Ghana uh, in 2026 uh, to really connect uh, people in America with the African slave trade. And uh, it'll be a spiritual trip. Uh, I've done several trips, uh, you know, to China, to Greece, Rome, following the steps of footsteps of the Apostle Paul, to Israel, uh, South Africa, uh, also Ghana. And I'm in partnership with a church in Ghana, the Bethel Presbyterian Church in the Ga division of uh, downtown Accra. And uh, it'll be a spiritual trip, unlike any that you've ever seen before. And if you go to my church website, Plymouth United Church of Christ, you can see the itinerary for the trip. So what am I saying? I'm saying that I have an expanded ministry and I want you to be a part of this. And you can be a part by watching today's program. You are part of this ministry. Uh, if you want to receive the spiritual email newsletter, that's another level. If you want to receive my blog, that's a level. And if you make a contribution, you will help this ministry to continue to flower. God bless, God keep you, and remember, I am praying for you.